So far in this series on Tone.js, we learned how to set up a simple synth and trigger it with our computer's keyboard. Now, if you haven't seen those videos yet, I'll put a link down in the description so you can get up to speed. But in this video, we're going to take that simple synth and we're going to explore the various oscillators that can be used with it. What do I mean by oscillators? Well, to put it simply, Oscillators are the components in a synthesizer that create the sound. If you think about organic instruments like flute or guitar, for example, the sound is produced by blowing air or plucking a string. And this sets off vibrations in the bodies of those instruments, which then produces sound waves. In a synthesizer, however, we use oscillators to generate the sound. These oscillators produce electronic signals with various wave shapes such as sine waves, square waves, triangle waves, and sawtooth waves. These waveforms are the basic building blocks of synthesized sound. Now, if we look at the Tone.js documentation for the synth, we see that it's comprised of an omni-oscillator, which then gets sent into an amplitude envelope, which then finally gets sent to the output, or your speakers. So the Omni Oscillator represents the waveform that's used to create the sound. And then that amplitude envelope is used to further shape or modify the waveform produced by the Omni Oscillator. I'll be discussing the amplitude envelope in a follow-up video, but we'll just stick to the oscillator here. As the name implies, the Omni Oscillator gives us many different options for the oscillator's wave shape. In this video, though, I'm just going to focus on the four essential oscillator types. And these are the ones I mentioned earlier, the sine, the square, the triangle, and the sawtooth. Now, one last thing to mention before we dive into those, I want to point out to you that in my index.html file, I've swapped out the script tag that I was using in the previous videos. And I swapped it out with this script tag, which you can see on line 9. And I'm using this new script tag because this is going to give us the most recent up-to-date version of Tone.js, which as of this video is version 15.0.4. All right, so coming back into our app.js file now, let's see how we can set up these various oscillator types in the Tone.synth. So let's go into our invocation of Tone.synth. And inside the parentheses, we're going to pass in an options object. And in this options object, we're going to use a property called oscillator. And we're going to assign this oscillator property to another object, which has a type property on it. Now it's this type property that we can assign the various oscillator types to. So we'll start out with the most basic oscillator type, and that's the sine wave. And let's go into the browser, and on my computer's keyboard, I'm going to play a note, and we'll hear an example of the sine wave. I described the sound of the sine wave as being very pure, very simple, without any buzziness or harmonic overtones to it whatsoever. Now to compare, let's change the type of the oscillator to the triangle wave. And now we'll come into the browser, and trigger the triangle wave. And notice that it's still a, a fairly pure sound, but has a slight bit more buzziness to it than the sine wave, which we heard before. Now let's try the square wave. And again, we'll play a note. And hopefully there you can hear the difference in the timbre of the sound, or the characteristic of the sound. The square wave has more of a buzziness and maybe more of a hollow kind of sound when compared to the sine and the triangle types. And then for the type with the buzziest sound or the most harmonic content to it is the sawtooth wave. So let's hear that one. Now let's dive into a little bit of the theory behind these oscillator types so we can deepen our understanding. Now here's a visual representation of these oscillator types. You notice that each one has a different visual shape. What we're looking at are representations of the voltage shape of the various waveforms. In a synthesizer, 
The synth's oscillator creates a periodic rising and falling of voltage, and that's what results in a particular type of waveform. By the way, the x-axis here represents time, and the y-axis represents amplitude. Now, the sine type, as you can see, has a more smooth and rounded shape than the others. If we look at the square type, for example, it has very definite and hard symmetrical ups and downs to its wave shape. Looking at the triangle, although it's pointy, it has more gradual ramps up and down to those points. Now the sawtooth here on the bottom, this one takes longer to ramp up to its pointed peak, but then it takes a sharp and abrupt drop. And by the way, there's a variation of the sawtooth, which is basically the same wave shape, but inverted. So that one starts with an instantaneous ramp up, followed by a longer ramp down. And you see, because the wave shapes are different, different harmonic content is generated by each one of them. On one extreme of the spectrum, we have the sine wave, being the purest and simplest, with basically only its fundamental tone being heard. The sawtooth is on the other end of the spectrum, and it's the type with the most overtones and harmonic content. Now this idea of harmonic content and overtones, let's take a look at that a bit more deeply for a minute. In the real world, instruments like pianos and guitars and violins, for example, they all produce complex timbres. By timbre, I mean the overall tonal quality of the instrument, or the sound. It's the thing that makes a piano sound like a piano, or a flute sound like a flute. The shape of the instrument, the size of the instrument, the material it's made out of, and other factors they all contribute to the timbre it produces. But how does this work in terms of waveforms and harmonic content? Well, to understand this, we need to know a little bit about the harmonic series. Now here we have a musical staff, and the pitches on this musical staff are the first 12 pitches in the harmonic, or as it's also known, the overtone series. When an instrument plays a pitch, like the pitch C, for example, you're not just hearing the note C. What you're actually hearing is a whole series of notes or overtones in addition, not just the fundamental pitch. The thing is, these overtones aren't at the same amplitude as the fundamental pitch. If they were, that would probably sound really cacophonous. Rather, the overtones are blended in with the fundamental, but at a lower amplitude, and this is what gives each instrument its particular timbre. So, like all those different instruments that we mentioned before, they all work with this overtone series when a note is played, but the difference is in the amplitude or strength of the various pitches in the overtone series. And that's why we get different characteristic sounds from all the different instruments. Now, going back to the four basic waves that we talked about before, the sine, the square, the triangle, and the sawtooth, each one of these is producing a distinct harmonic spectrum, and that's what gives each one its own timbre. The sine wave is basically just fundamental, with no overtones, and this is a reason why it sounds so simple and pure. It's not complex at all, like instruments that exist in the real world that aren't synthesizers. The triangle wave has a strong fundamental, but its odd-numbered overtones are also very present as well. Now the sawtooth wave is the buzziest and most complex, because all of its overtones are heard although their amplitude does decrease the higher the overtone gets in frequency. And then the square wave, like the triangle wave, focuses on the odd overtones in the harmonic series. Although these overtones differ in their amplitude and the rate by which their amplitude decreases, compared to those of the triangle wave. And that's why the square wave seems to be buzzier and a bit louder than the triangle wave. <laughs> 